Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I'm just going to be doing some work today on this power carbine uh, KCO2, which has currently got one of the RGW uh, full auto kits installed. Uh, we're going to be removing the full auto kit and installing um, our own trigger parts. We have a Nightwind Fang trigger to install, which you'll notice matches all the other parts of the gun. Every Rogueworks piece on this, this particular KCO2 is all in Nightwind, and the I know that the trigger mech is almost brand new, I think, in this one, or it's something newer than one of our test pieces. So we're going to be um, taking that apart, and we're going to be taking this trigger mech apart, which is the one I've drilled several holes into. It's currently got a standard trigger installed, but it has got the Judgment hammer and sear installed. So we're going to be taking them out and we're going to have this trigger and the hammer and sear from this one. We're going to put the standard parts back into this trigger mech and we're going to have the trigger mech from that gun with this trigger, this hammer and sear and then we're going to put them back into the power carbine over there. And then we've also got another trigger mech, this one, which is from uh, also a very new uh, trigger mech. We're going to be taking the standard trigger out of this and replacing it with this Nightwind pattern fang trigger, which we've just had come back from acorn plating. Uh, to have it anodized. So, nothing particular to show you today. We're just going to be uh, working on those three trigger mechs and one gun. I can probably just share with you some of the tips and tricks that I've got for whilst I'm going through that. So, let's get this on the bench. Uh, this sling is really nice, but it's also really annoying, so I'm going to uh, remove this before we get started. This is an MBW stock, uh, the underfolder, if I can get it off the gun. trouble of getting color matched screws for the hardware on this case here too which is a nice touch but slightly unnecessary I guess we were considering stocking color matched screw sets on Rogueworks but we haven't found a supplier at the right price for us to stock them. Ah. I remember now. Move all this out of the way so I can get everything under the camera a bit better. The annoying thing with this full auto kit, you've got the selector here. I believe that is that is the safe position. I 
think so. positions. Oh wait, now I can't. Okay. So that position there is the safe. And then I think that is semi. It sticks a bit and that would be full auto. Um, the annoying thing is because of these selector levers, they make the trigger mech wider than the usual body slot. So you actually have to remove these uh, selector arms before you can get it out of the gun. So, and it's a really tiny hex head. Oh, I think that's a that's a hex 1.5. Yep. I'm just gonna find the little bag that this came out of. Slightly concerned that the ball detent is uh, not in the bag. I wonder where that went. Uh, anyway, uh, each one of these little selector arms has a ball and spring under it, so this can get quite fun when you're trying to remove it without losing anything. spring. I think it comes with one ball and spring and then if you want one on each side you have to use the one that normally slots into your safety. So I'm just going to get a little dish here because little parts like this just disappear. Never to be found again. And it looks like this side has already lifted out of place. So I'm gonna be very careful. I'm just gonna lift that out of the way if I can. Actually, let's just unscrew it because it's gonna be coming out anyway. Oh God, oh God, the ball. I've already lost one of these in here somewhere. Although this kit is good for giving you full auto on your KCO2, I'm not 100% sold on the selector and seeing as I only run my KCO2s on CO2 anyway, um, I didn't really, uh, the performance from the full auto was not very good. 
I got massive uh, mag cooldown, meaning that I could uh, very rarely finish a magazine on full auto, and <laughs> the fire rate was insane. Is this going to come out, or is it going to be a pain? I can't remember how this is retained. it's just a rotating barrel then it should just come out at uh, one particular orientation uh, uh, let's get something to poke it out of here it interferes with the trigger so is it gonna come out I don't think that is going to willingly release itself from the gun in the current orientation. So let, I've already got that body screw out, so we should be able to lift this out of the stock now. There we go. As you can see, it's got MBW stamped on the inside here. I did have to do fair bit of um, dremeling to get the KCO2 receiver to fit into this stock. These areas here needed a, f a couple of millimeters of bushback. Um, I think generally this trigger area in here and certainly these areas all needed widening to suit the KCO2. You can't really see where I've done it now because I've rubbed uh, some wax into the areas that I dremeled, there's only very slight witness marks. You can probably see it in the reflection of the light a bit better than what I can feel it now. But I love this stock. It's a uh, very solid all steel hardware. Everything locks into place nicely. You press this button. Oops. Uh, press the button, it releases the underfolder. Very strong solid snap in a place. This snaps in a place as well. And that is certainly something, although there's some movement on it, obviously there's no cheek weld, but in terms of fast aiming, that is something you can certainly put into your shoulder. This is all steel. It is lovely. So we'll put that to one side. Here we have the body. Oh, one of the trigger pins is already escaping. Let's pop that over there and poke the other one out. You can tell how new how new this KCO2 is. There's almost no wear on the uh, on the trigger body pins. That's our trigger mic. The inside of this is pretty much all brand new. I only built this gun a few months ago to test out the uh, full auto kit and I wasn't really impressed by its performance because it had massive gas consumption even with CO2 so uh, it just went in the box. So what we're going to do is um, remove the full auto kit and install one of our judgment and fang trigger sets. So, put this receiver to one side. Uh, right, tools, tools, tools. I can see I've done a good job of uh, greasing everything up, so I'm just going to pause for a second and get some kitchen towel because although my desk is not perfectly clean I don't want molybdenum gun grease all over it so let's pause there lovely high quality piece of kitchen towel just to put the greasy parts on that we're about to remove so 
So we have the needle nose, first things first. Get your hammer and hammer spring out. And then we need a pokey tool. Just a little spike thing. I don't know what this is, I've had it for years. Um, and you're gonna to wanna to knock your hammer pin out. And get that greasy thing over there. When your hammer comes out, you can see this is covered in grease. Pop that on the mat. And now you can remove your trigger pin like that. And as long as that safety is not hanging on the trigger, I should be able to lift this up. Ooh. There's definitely a trick to this. The disconnector spring is trying to escape. Let's grab that. So the disconnector and full auto sear have just popped out of the trigger. So that's your trigger and disconnector. If I give this a little shake, there are your two sears. Now, the full auto kit has two sears. Let's just put them side by side here. You can see they're very different shapes. One has this long arm that is acted on by the selector and by the safety, and one is just fixed in place. It is independent of both the disconnector and the safety. So that one is the full auto sear. That one is the safety and semi-select sear. So they're both parts of this kit. Uh, we'll be taking those out. You can see the uh, trigger return pin under here. It's trying to escape. It's got a fair bit of grease on it. So as long as it moves freely when you push it, it's all fine. Now with that trigger removed, I should just be able to push out this selector. There we go. It's dropping out the bottom now. There we go. So you can see this uh, rotating selector barrel has angles cut out of it, and when you so when you twist it one way, it will hold down the semi-auto sear so that it never catches the hammer, which means the full auto sear uh, is in control of whether the hammer is captured or not to stop it from firing. And when you twist it the other way, it releases the semi-auto sear so that the semi-auto catches the hammer as normal even if you've still got the trigger pulled which is clever and then if you twist it all the way around this rotating barrel will actually block the semi-auto sear so that you can't pull the trigger even if um, even regardless of what the full auto sear is doing so uh, there's a, it's a very clever kit it introduced two sears into the trigger mech with a rotating selector barrel to control which one is doing the work. If we take out the standard sears from this particular gun you can see it's just a wide piece with the, uh, with the long arm on it. Let's get the light over here a bit better. There we go. But we won't be needing that. Um, because we're not going to be reinstalling that one either. We do need the standard safety back. This can go back in. So let's separate out which parts we do and do not need from this gun now, and we'll put whatever's left into this little baggie with the other stuff. So. 
need the standard safety back. And all these little pieces can go in the bag. And which spring is the standard one? I'm going to go with that wiry one just there. So, that in the bag, these nice selectors back in the bag. One of the balls, here's tiny screws, another selector arm. Uh, that'll do for the chrome pieces, I think. What about the greasy stuff? Well, we're not going to be reinstalling the standards here, so we can put some of the greasy bits in here with this. Rotating selector barrel, the auto sear, semi sear. We don't need those. Uh, look at the hammer as well, I suppose. Let's get another baggie for the hammer. pieces in the bag that these came out of. Uh, I think that's it for spares from this one. And we are going to have the standard trigger to go in this bag as well. So, um, another baggie for the trigger? Why not? Disconnector and the disconnector pin. So I'll take these greasy boys out of here. There's your standard KCO2 trigger. Pop that in the bag. And that can go in this packet as well. we can do before we start messing with the trigger is get the safety reinstalled. I say simple, I probably just betrayed myself um, because it is not a simple task. Uh, installing this with this little spring and ball, it will try to escape and it's a real nightmare. So we're just going to drop that on there. Now if I let go of this, this this little ball will launch off of that spring and we will never ever see it again. Come on, come on. I need a screwdriver. it, 
extended safety is reinstalled. And that's probably the last time I'll touch that because nobody uses the safety on the KCO2 because if you press it too hard, it just ejects itself. So that can just stay as it is uh, forever. So let's uh, get over to these parts. So that's the newish trigger mech with the vampire mag release that we want to be installing the parts into. So let's put, get these pins and stuff over here because we don't want to get these mechs mixed up. That one, disconnector. Now, here is our janky old uh, test trigger mech. It's got lots of holes drilled into it. It's, uh, it's had a hard life. So let's uh, take the hammer spring out of this one. You notice this hammer spring, oops, if I get, get these parts, that is a standard KCO2 hammer spring. You see how it's uh, a bit wider at the bottom? <clears throat> Let me get a ruler and check that. standard KCO2 hammer spring is about 50 millimeters long maybe maybe 48 and this is a mag 150 percent hammer spring that has been cut down to about 30 mil long and that gives it roughly the same strength as the standard hammer spring so I don't know where this uh, this hammer spring came from it was in this particular trigger mech when I got it it came with a boneyard KCO2 which had also seen a very hard life um, I can't remember what happened to most of the parts from that gun um, I think they just kind of got absorbed uh, right so that's the hammer spring out let's get the hammer pin out of here for the old one let's not get these mixed up that's for the new one let's get that hammer spring back on there old hammer pin and this is one of the most interesting parts we have around us at the minute this is the rogueworks judgment hammer for the kto2 it is made out of a nice hard grade of stainless steel, which is then plasma nitride hardened to be even harder. Um, and then it's polished. I think it's polished before the hardening and then hardened and then they give it another buff again afterwards. But this thing is beautiful. And it's got a different geometry layout to the standard hammer. If I just grab a standard hammer out of the tray over here, you can see that they're a different shape. Uh, ours is slightly smoother on the edges and stuff, and obviously ours is polished, but the main difference is the distance of the hammer here from the pivot point that gives you the nice light trigger pull. Installing this hammer with the sear, which is also going to come out of this trigger mech in a few minutes, uh, gives you around a two pound trigger pull, whereas the standard trigger pull is something around four, maybe five, depending on how old your gun is. So, installing this into your gun gives you a really nice light trigger pull. So, I'm going to put this up here with the new parts, with the parts that we've got laid out for the new trigger mech. And next up, we want to remove the trigger from this old mech. So we're going to push the trigger pin out. I forgot this one's a little bit bent because it's so old. I'm going to give it a little bit more force. There we go. And if you're very careful, you can lift this out without it firing springs everywhere. your trigger oops of course he drops it 
That is your trigger with your disconnector, the disconnector spring in there, and your trigger sear itself, which in this case is our new judgment. Hardened stainless steel, the same material as the hammer over here. This is our design, which again is very different to the standard KCO2 sear to accommodate the larger distance from the pivot point for the hammer and trigger. So I'm going to put that over here with the new pieces. And as you can see from this old trigger mech, the trigger return pin has escaped from its little hidey hole at the back of the guard here. Just check that shove back in there. The standard disconnector. So now we have two trigger mechs without hammers or triggers. Now the question is do we want to take this disconnector which we've filed slightly and install it in the new trigger mech over here? This one, as you can see, is still very new. I think we're gonna keep it as it is for now, and we'll see if it works. So we're gonna get uh, our shiny new trigger, wherever I've put it, over here. And we're gonna wanna install the disconnector and the disconnector pin in here. These have already got loads of grease on, so I'm not gonna add any more. And we get the judgment sear and the spring. Swap that under there, make sure that the spring engages. Uh, no, that's the old one. I'm gonna get the new one. Oops. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Everything's moved. That's all right. So, yeah, this. Slot it down in here at an angle. Make sure the return pin here has not escaped. Oh, I've just realized I've forgotten to put the grub screw in. Stop, 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 stop. Back out, back out. I've already got these grub screws up here and I'm getting my lip denim grease all over this. These are the travel limiting screws to go in the back of the trigger. Let's get hex key. What size do we need? That one? A two, two and a half? Can't remember. Um, yeah, it's a two. go far we'll just see how it is for now because we'll probably have to adjust it one way or the other anyway now we slide this back in here get yourself a screwdriver and poke it down under the disconnector bar One, this is 
spin it over so that you can see the sear on the inside. Give it a wiggle. Two, three. That is the trigger in. movement on there so at least it should work we can always adjust the over travel afterwards there's a little bit too much grease for my liking on the trigger return pin just scrape some of that off Oops. now how sexy does that look with the uh, vampire mag release and a vampire trigger installed very nice but we're not done yet let's get the hammer in look through the holes line it up get your hammer pin There we go, it's easy as pie. Now we have the interesting part. Now, I've recently seen a trick for this um, posted by a, a female airsofter. I don't actually know what the translation is for her page's name. She has her own K02 page, but I think her pro personal profile is GX Lynn. She does post on the KCO2 group quite a lot, and she showed me this trick. Gripping the hammer like that with the spring compressed on it. Oh, that's going to need a bit more angle. If I let go of this, this uh, guide rod is going through the roof. Hey, look at that, it works. If I can get, get this lined up. This is the first time I try. Oh, oh no, I've let go of it. Quick, take it back out. First time I've tried doing it this way. Pull it down, grip it like that, and then press it down on the desk. There you go. it like that, angle it, and then try and get it in the guide hole at the back of the trigger mech without letting it go. <laughs> she made this look a lot easier on the video, I'm not going to lie. Oh. oh, I just shot myself in the arm with that. <laughs> Where'd the spring go? It's okay, I got it. <laughs> Saw that coming. Let's try that one again. There we go. Now, don't let it go this time, Aaron. Oh, I think I got it. Get some of the fluff off. Looks good, looks good. resets and fires on the first attempt. I've got way too much travel on that trigger, that needs adjusting. That fire's there, probably got almost another millimeter of movement. There's a lovely action there. Beautiful. Uh, uh, uh. So 
So I'm just going to pause for a sec. I'm just going to whip that back out again and uh, just dial out that screw slightly more to limit the trigger travel so that we get a more positive end to each trigger pull. Okay. Right, let's see how quickly I can do this uh, without having to explain every single step to you guys. Hammer spring out. Hammer pin out. Hammer out. Trigger main pin out. Try and lift the sear around the forward lock bar. I can't remember what the part number it is. But just so that your sear doesn't eject itself. There we go. Come on. There we go. There it is. There's the trigger. I don't need to change anything here. I just want to extend this screw slightly. Give it half a turn, that might be too much. We'll find out shortly. Trigger back in. Poke the sear down. Make sure the return pin is still in place. Line that up. Trigger pin. Spin it round. Fish the sear into place. That's the trigger back in. There's a lot less movement on that now. Anyway, hammer back in. Hammer pin. And let's try GX Lin's trick with the hammer and guide rod again. Shot myself again. Ow! Where'd that go? Oh, it's on the floor. Okay. <sighs> Man. I hope you're happy. <laughs> I'm sure this is highly entertaining. This is an easier way to do it than because what I'd normally do is grab this grab this thing with mole grips and force it into place. But uh that's really difficult to do. This is actually easier, even though I've shot myself uh, three times now. There we go. Maybe you can get that in and then let it go. And that's it. Oh, beautiful. So. That goes all the way down. I just wipe my fingers a bit here. I'm getting horrible grease all over my shiny new parts. Yeah. That safety's a lot looser now. Lovely, very positive. Look how little trigger movement we got there. If I can hold this still. That's less than two mil total trigger travel there. It does help having a fresh new trigger Mac because none of the pins have got much slack on them. So the trigger doesn't have to, the trigger pull doesn't have to account for slack on say the trigger pivot pin or the hammer pivot pin.
Beautiful. You'll notice as well that is with the disconnector, which is uh, where's it gone? I'll take it out here. This piece, which if I grab our holy handbook. Part 71, the disconnector. In this old Trigger Mac, I had to sand with a little square needle file this area here to bring. Hang on, can you guys see that? This area here. This area here to bring the catching edge down to account for the slack in the trigger mac because it was old. I just installed our hammer, sear and trigger into this relatively new trigger mac and didn't have to file anything. You literally watched me install this without having to modify any of the parts. I only had to take it back out again to adjust the trigger pull screw, which you'd set at personal preference anyway. So that is proof that it does work with a standard trigger. Very nice. 